Perfume has fascinated man since the dawn of time. Some of the rarest raw materials, called gum resins, the two most famous being frankincense and myrrh, were used by the ancients as gifts to their gods. But they didn't understand how these precious raw materials could be received. So someone in history came up with the idea of burning them. And they saw that as they burnt the gum resins, they started to ascend toward heaven through smoke, releasing their perfume. The Latin for this phenomenon is perfumare. It is the origin of the word itself, perfume. One of the most remarkable of all the raw materials is a raw material called oud. Oud comes from a tree called the agarwood tree. So this piece of oud might end up either being distilled to make the oud oil, or you might break a tiny, tiny piece off, literally a piece no, no larger than this, which would then be placed on charcoal, burning charcoal, to release its scent. And so we have the echo of how perfume first originated, because as it goes on the charcoal, it of course burns and releases its precious scented odor. And so we have, again, perfumum, perfumare, the thing of scent being released through smoke. In the Middle East, when we burn oud, it has a special name, which is bahur. And the bahur is really part of everyday ritual and culture in the Middle East. And it's used to scent clothes, and it's used also to scent wardrobes, and it's used to scent homes. The way this scent, it's so soft, and yet it clings to the clothes. But the most fascinating thing about it is that when you mix another scent with it, so you start to personalize your fragrance, because of its ability to hold, it literally traps the perfume you put with it, and so your normal fragrance lasts for days and days, if you wish, on your clothing, smelling as fresh as the day you applied it. And it's one of the very, very unusual qualities of oud. For somebody who's really a specialist, they would look at this piece of oud and experience, and their eye would tell them just like that, the quality of it and its value, because this literally is along with ambergris, the most costly raw material in the world. And very often this raw material will cost many, many times the price of pure gold bullion. The age of the oud and the source of origin determine its quality. No one would use an oud which is brand new. It would uh, be really like taking something like a balsamic vinegar, which is very, very young. What we want is for the thing to age and become mellow. Most ouds that you find in uh, an Arabic perfumery are going to be somewhere between maybe 10, 20, 30 years old. And sometimes you might be lucky to be able to smell an oud which is 120 or 140 years old. Those are incredibly rare. There are only a handful of perfumeries that would have such a material. Because if you think it's finite, you can't suddenly have huge volumes of it. And so you really are stepping back in time in a way and stepping in to the ultimate world of luxury. Most people in the West have no point of reference for Oud. But suddenly, as the, the Gulf region starts to open up as a destination for travel, whether through holiday or for business, we start to smell this very, very strange, exotic and beguiling scent. And so in the West, we also start to become interested in oud. But most importantly, from a creative point of view, Tom Ford, with his enormous influence on fashion and taste, started to work ouds into some of his private blends. And it is this more than anything that has exposed Westerners to the yeah. use of oud. I think one of the things for me which is fascinating about the Middle Eastern market, that Middle Eastern clients' approach to scent is just unlike any approach in the West. I think that we just don't have the comprehension of how important fragrance is in Middle Eastern culture, the way they use the scent. And I think that whilst there's been a recession, or is a recession, which touches everybody around the world, somehow, certainly for the Middle Eastern clients, there is no way they would give up uh, perfume for something else. It's too ingrained as part of everyday life. 
Once you have discovered oud, you almost can't imagine the idea of perfuming yourself or wearing a scent without a little bit of it. Oud is very warm, very deep, earthy, a little bit dry, not sweet, sensual, sometimes can be smoky. It pervades the air in a gentle way. It's like smelling wind that just wraps you up in its soft, gentle sensuality.